Welcome to the show that takes you behind the scenes at Flamingoland Theme Park and Zoo in North Yorkshire during the countdown to opening for the 2006 summer season. And stay tuned for the chance to win a family break in York later in the program. The park opens in just two months and choreographer Hayley Richardson is arriving to start rehearsals for the Professor Bubbles show. No staff accommodation is available for her yet and she's been told she can stay in a luxury holiday caravan for now. Caravans like this are normally oh, reserved for guests, nice. not staff. This won't be where I'm staying though. I know it isn't because this is a high FB fan. They're going to put us in a shed after all. <laughs> but it's nice. We'll fight for this caravan now. Two of the smallest beds you've ever seen. I won't fit in there. That's better. This is nice, this is obviously the main bedroom. I like this one. Oh, toilet. God, it's so small and it's really freezing. It's like icy cold. We need some heating. You can't even hear any gas coming out. <sighs> Good job, what the duvet. No! <laughs> Brilliant. There's no electric either. And there's no water. <laughs> Excellent. All right, thanks. Bye, bye, bye. He said um, it'll be sorted by the end of the day. He's going to get someone onto it straight away. And he said um, if I play my cards right, then I can stay here. Kaylee's not the only one moving into a new home. Over in the zoo, the Mangaby family have got the removal men in too, in the shape of keepers, Dean and Tom. It took a while to get them to, to move, and there was a bit of fuss, but, um, you know, it's, it's better than knocking them out or anything like that, so, so we've got them and they can go down and uh, have a look at their new house, see what they think. Well, the Mangabies here at Flamingo are part of a, a European endangered species programme. And uh, they're actually from West Africa. There's various species there that are um, really endangered. It's got a few of their toys as well to make it more homely for them. Uh, I know it sounds a bit daft, but they're used to having the TV. I'm just wondering if that'll set them down a bit. I don't think there's a plug socket actually for it. Not at all. We can soon get one, okay. get one rib rigged up though. Yeah, we can sort it later. We'll bring it down later. You can still have your morning TV, guys. But only for a bit. Well, the morning TV was just there to entertain them because they've been in a, a temporary sort of house there. They've not, um, they've not had access to an outdoor cage for a few months. So um, we put a TV on them and we do that for a lot of the primates. The chimps, chimps love TV as well, so any old TVs that get thrown away, they come, come down the zoo and, uh, and the monkeys watch them. There's no reason why we can't bring a TV down here as well, but they've got all this wonderful area, so there's probably enough to keep them occupied, but, you know, we... Um, We'll, we'll give them a TV if they want one. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm free. We only actually got our breeding female six years ago, and this is actually one of the ten rarest primates uh, on the planet, and there's only actually 50 in Europe, um, and very few in the wild, so it's a really important, important species that we're working on. It took us five years from getting her to actually get a live, a live baby off her. Um, so, you know, it's quite an achievement. She always had miscarriages and stillbirths and things like that. Um, so this is sort of the end result of a lot of work. And we've got this now smashing new house room that they're going to love. They look lost in it, actually. They look tiny in it. So it's uh, really exciting for us and we're pleased to get them down here. Flamingo Land's farm area is being completely revamped for 2006. It's the pet project of theme designer Victoria Gibb, who's also the boss's wife. Well, this is going to be Muddy Duck Farm. Um, it's a new development for children. Obviously, the centre of the, of the ride is these tractors, which are beautiful and almost full size, which is so exciting for children. We've got Muddy Duck Pond, which is obviously why we're called Muddy Duck Farm. 
and there'll be a beautiful duck house in the middle of there and some hopefully quite muddy ducks happily sloshing away in the water in there. Over here we're going to have um, sheep. We, we, we've got lambs and things happening which will be quite exciting. Um, we've got donkeys, shire horses, we've got Shetland ponies, we've got Dexters which are the smallest cows, they're from Ireland and they're lovely and um, they're going to be in that paddock over there, hopefully not too smelly. We're redeveloping all of the buildings that were in the old farm area and uh, it's all going to look, well hopefully it's going to look like a cross between the farmhouse in Bathe and something out of an Enid Blyton novel, but um, that's just wishful thinking. <laughs> but the idea is that there's lots to see but nothing to touch. People just need to see the animals. They don't need to be touching them. For the animals' sake as well as the human beings, I just don't think it's, I don't think it's good policy. Victoria is responsible for the themes and concepts behind all Flamingoland's rides. Her favourite bit of this new one hasn't been built yet. We've also introduced some animatronics uh, this year. We've got a fabulous pig and her suckling litter. And you go into a building and you just look down and see the pig and her, and her litter all suckling away, and that's an animatronic. I think, all in all, it'll be a really fun ride. Back in the holiday village, Haley's busy settling into her temporary new home. This is a hint, isn't it, that there's not going to be any heating with all these two bits. It's nice. One, two. Four. Six two bits. I'm going to have to put one of them two on the bottom because it's so cold. And if I just put a sheet there, I, I might freeze. <laughs> oh god. Wow. More blankets. We'll need them tonight. It's really cold. Elsewhere in the holiday village, Melissa and Abby are busy preparing Flamingo Land's log cabin guest accommodation. This is one of 13 log cabins, which is a new phase for Flamingo Land, although in its second year. The first season as an introductory was absolutely fantastic. Um, when you start a new venture, you're never sure how it's going to go. Um, and it was far better than we ever anticipated. They never stood empty. They were fully booked all through the year. Um, and people who arrived to stay in our caravans um, were asking if there was vacancy so they could upgrade while on holiday to stay in a log cabin. Um, they are aimed at the top end of our market, fully central heated, which is different to the caravans, and therefore at this time of year makes it far nicer to work in, because unlike the caravans, which are freezing, and, um, these are nice and warm. Mind you, if you want luxuries like central heating, it doesn't come cheap at Flamingo Land. A cabin like this costs over £1,200 a week in peak season. Some people might say that £1,250 is an awful lot of money. Um, yeah, and in some cases they might be right. However, um, I feel that the, the £1,250 is a very good price um, when, especially if you're a mum and dad with four children, the price you pay everything is included. Um, so when you get here, you've not got your children at your ankles wanting this, that and the other because you just take them into your theme park, you've got your ride starting for your toddlers from your very small up to your White Knuckle Valley in the new ride this year, as well as the zoo for a nice leisurely walk around and your leisure facilities. So everything you need for your week for your family is already here at no extra cost. This is my first season doing the cabins. Last year um, I was based mainly on the caravan so it's a real nice change to be on the cabins this year especially since they're so much warmer than the caravans themselves. And to be honest with you, this is probably the worst job about doing them because if you see, you've only got a certain amount of places that the hooks can go. So it's a case of trying to get the tension right throughout the pelmet, which you can see hasn't really worked here. And then hopefully hooking them up properly. And then when you know you've gone wrong, it's a case of pulling them all down and starting them up again. Over in the new Mangaby house, the family seem very happy with their new home. We've just given them the one small enclosure today, but tomorrow we'll probably give them a the large enclosure and uh, just see how they get on, really. You know, get them into a good routine and uh, see how it goes. 
they're settling in really, really well. We were um, really surprised. They just seem to have taken it all in their stride. You know, obviously, they've um, been been through an ordeal of being moved and into a new house, but they're just they're so chilled out. It's absolutely brilliant to watch them. After the break, we'll be meeting Victoria's husband and he's cruising for a bruising and how to persuade a hippo he needs to see. There's been some wintry weather overnight at Flamingoland and there are worries it may have caused delays to work on the new £6 million roller coaster, but operations manager Phil Pritchard is bursting with confidence. When the project first started, we allowed two weeks for this type of bad weather scenario. Um, we've now got it, hopefully it'll be clear by maybe tomorrow. Uh, as you can see, all the workers have turned in. Um, we've got themed rock work in the lake, they're happy chappies. Um, some lads working on the disabled ramp exit to the ride. Uh, the ride at the moment is being commissioned by Vacoma, who manufactured the device. The installation team have finished two weeks ahead of schedule, which is fantastic news for us and the commissioning team's now on site. Um, they check every single item that's been installed and then as soon as they're happy, we can run. All right, Gordon, this is obviously our first session. Uh, we want to be doing a bit and uh, see how Arc we boss Gordon Gibbs taking boxing lessons. Probably just as well the countdown to opening is going smoothly. Uh, Boxing's an amazing discipline and the fitness is absolutely second to none, even when I was playing... Uh, rugby to a fairly high standard. I've never been as fit as I am now. It's uh, a great distraction from the, the stresses okay. and the strains of, of running a business. That's all right. It's nice. My name's uh, Craig Salt. I'm a coach at Westway Boxing Club in Scarborough. And uh, I've come along today to do a bit with Gordon Gibb from uh, Flamingo Land, and hopefully we're going to have a useful lad on our hands there. One, two. Good lad, that's good. There's no half measures in boxing. Good. It's a one-on-one -on -one sport. And uh, you do need to be exceptionally fit. I personally think it's the hardest spot out. One, two. Good, that's good, that's good. Let's have a look at that left hook. Go into the left hook, nice and loose, nice and loose from the nips. Whip it in from your backside. Gordon's in good shape. And hopefully uh, we're going to get a little bit more weight off him and get him a bit sharper. Faster. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. For a novice, I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed. He's, uh, he's done very, very well. He's, uh, the pad work went quite well. I think he's got a decent prospect ahead of him. He'll just stay amateur. He's at that age, I think he's about 30 year old now. Uh, after 35, you finish. You can't go any, any further. It's not like the pro games. You can put boxing into pro games until you're 45, 50 if you want. Time. So I'm very, very pleased. And you want to get some small pad, pad gloves. Yeah. With plenty, plenty of padding in them. These are like sparring gloves, really. Right. They're all right. Get you some pads. Can you afford me? <laughs> we might have a spare point, Jim. <laughs> um, I train uh, in yeah, between yeah. the day and go back to work afterwards and always feel that I've got clearer thought after training than I did before, so I don't really see any clash that way. With the home life, we'll have to wait and see because obviously the, uh, the real match of the day is coming up with the um, impending birth of my son, but I'd have to say I'm a little bit more nervous about going into... Uh, a little bit more nervous about that one than I am going into the ring with somebody. Meanwhile, the expectant mum herself has taken up a more gentle sport to help her combat the stresses and strains of working whilst heavily pregnant. Be good. I'll be half an hour. Don't bark at anyone. It's something I started doing about four months ago. I used to run up until I was uh, five months pregnant, but it got very uncomfortable and I started getting horrible stitches and I frightened myself a bit, so I stopped doing that and started swimming. So... I swim about half a mile, front crawl every day, and that does it. I think that's keeping me fit and healthy. I hope so, anyway. It's a much more comfortable exercise to do when you're pregnant than running, let me tell you. We're expecting our first child uh, in two weeks, exactly two weeks. It's something I've wanted for, well, ever, really. I'm really very much looking forward to it, and then at the same time, I'm completely terrified. I feel that every other job you do, you, you have to go to college and learn about. And this one, they just kind of hand you this wriggly little red baby and say, get on with it, which is, uh, well, petrifying, really. But I'm sure we'll manage. We've, we've got two dogs and three cats, and we're managing OK with them. We'll be, this will just be like another one of the animals, I'm sure. 
Back at the park, preparations are well underway for the public opening, and in the Plaza Bar, the stage set for the Professor Bubble show is taking shape, and Haley's made some dramatic changes to the production. The show's different this year because I've introduced a new character, I've introduced a bit of magic, so I've got two illusions coming. OK, Dave. OK, this is going to be... It's, moved, it's been difficult, actually, because it's going to move, obviously, without... without no, it's going to be a bit of magic. But we've been having problems thinking what I could be. So I think it's going to be... We've decided on a big vase of flowers, quite luminous flowers. And um, obviously it's going to move like this, and the kids are going to shout. Yeah! Hopefully. This is another thing. We've got a, a little pin in here. Um, Dave, on the picture, do you think you've pulled the pin out? Yeah. And when he's talking, this is going to be a, a portrait of Professor Bubbles and things are going wrong in his lab. And uh, like that, the picture's going to fall and the kids are going to shout, Ah! Hopefully. There's, there's a plot as well. So there's, there's a reason to watch it till the end. It's not just singing and dancing. But she's worried about how the park's directors will react to her changes to a tried and tested formula. There's only one person that knows about this new character, so obviously I'm very concerned um, in case they don't like it. I mean, they, they might not even like me bringing in a new character, but I think that that's what the show needs. It needs something new. I'm going ahead with it, but it's just such a risk. So, just dreading the day of the directors coming to see it. I'm so worried in case you don't like it. But there's nothing not to like about it. It's, it's going to be great. Over in the zoo, head keeper Sam DeBell is also feeling anxious. Three-year-old hippo Ernie is facing a major operation. Hello, Godzilla. Are you coming to say hello? You a good girl? Come here. Yeah. This is Godzilla. She's about six years old and she's the soppiest one of the lot of them. We've got three hippos, two adult females. Um, and one of those adult females when she came was pregnant, so now we've got a little baby as well. Betty is the mother. We've got G Godzilla, which is the auntie. And we've got little baby Ernie. We don't really want him having baby Ernie's with his mother or his auntie. Um, so the idea is that we're going to try and lock him on his own in this area, which will be quite well bedded up, and he's going to be neutered, um, which will stop any overbreeding problems. I'll get your dinner down. Hang on. The, um, the procedure that the, gonna, the vets are going to carry out, it's quite unusual. I believe it hasn't been done for quite a few years. Go get your dinner. Go. As far as I know. Um, we've got our vet coming. We've got um, a vet from London that's done one before. Come on, Ernie. And we've also got the International Zoo Group coming to do the anaesthetic, because that in itself is a huge risk. Good boy. Come on. You're right. Good boy. You're going to have to get used to me. I'm sorry, but you are. Yes. Very good. Good boy. The bit I am personally worried about is A, getting him split off um, from his mum and his auntie, and B, how those two are going to react, because they're going to have to be locked outside completely, away from him, because they'll get het up. Um, I'm not particularly worried about bringing them back in, because I think they'll be so glad to sort of make sure that he's all right. It shouldn't be a problem, but yeah, the bit in between from the first bit I'm quite worried about. There are still problems with Haley's accommodation. She's going to see personnel manager Nikki Riddell. I left the caravan. I spent the night there, and then um, I had to move my stuff out. So instead of taking it all home, I moved them into the dressing room. This is the dressing room in the American bar, and this is all my stuff. And um, just waiting for somewhere else to live. So I'm commuting at the moment. Hi. Hi. Give me some good news, Nikki. <laughs> right, so it's about your accommodation, yeah? Uh-huh. Right, what we need to do is initially, because we're in the winter period, we're going to need to put you into a flat, all right, with the other girls, uh -huh. initially. As soon as the new accommodation's built, I'll actually move you into one of the superior rooms, which right. is actually built either for two people 
or a supervisor. None of the caravans have any facilities to them at the moment because we've, we're still in our winter programme. So what we've needed to do with Hayley is move her into one of the staff flats. I was staying in a higher van. They're the vans that people pay for during the summer, so I don't think they want, you know, wanted me staying in there. When you're ready, come round and get a key, mm -hmm. and then we can move you into any flat that's downstairs that's ready at the moment. Um, don't unpack fully, don't fully settle, and then as soon as the new flats are ready, I promise I'll move you into a nicer one that's built for a supervisor. How's that? If that you better? promise me. I promise. No, I, I wouldn't say anything I don't mean. Well, at least I know where I stand now. Thank you. No problem. And we'll be meeting the rest of the Professor Bubbles showcast next time. Here.